Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now talking politics now with the 2023 elections in view. And to join us, we've invited Mr. Festus Okoye, the Chair, Information and Voter Education Committee, INEC. Good morning, Mr. Okoye. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. There's a lot of talk about the 2023 elections and the Anambra elections, the presidential elections. There's just so much coming up in the next few years for Nigeria and our politics. Um, how is INEC getting ready for that? Uh, well, uh, we have uh, released the timetable and, uh, and schedule of activities for the said election. And as you are aware, so many of the political parties have already uh, set the date for the organization of their party primaries and other activities leading to the election. Um, as you are aware, we are trying to convert most of our voting points and voting point settlements into, uh, into polling units. And the moment we conclude that, uh, on the 28th of this month, uh, of, of June, we will start um, the continuous voters registration exercise. Now, this continuous voters registration exercise will enable those who have never registered before and who have turned 18 uh, to register. It will also enable those who have had problems of uh, verification and authentication uh, to uh, rectify whatever challenges they have. Those whose PVCs have been defaced can also have their PVCs changed. Uh, while those who uh, have moved from one local government to the other uh, can also do, do some level of um, uh, transfer. And since we have elections in Anambra, we are going to start the PVR on the 28th of June and then and then uh, pause around the uh, august to enable us to print uh, the uh, permanent voters cards of people in Anambra state and then after after the elections we will also resume but the implication is that we are going to deploy uh, more staff and more equipment uh, to Anambra state in order to for us to capture all the uh, people who do not have any legal disability and uh, so we are getting ready for the Anambra elections all right, Mr. Okoye, I, I see that, you know, INEC has been doing great so far with the preparation for the elections. But it seems that time and time again in Nigeria, when it's near an election period, one thing we begin to see is, you know, arson is setting fire to, you know, INEC buildings, you know, burning down, you know, lots of materials to be used for elections. And just yesterday, we heard the news about the INEC local government office in Akwaibom set ablaze. What is INEC going to do about this? I mean, we've seen this already less than two years to the elections. What are the plans INEC was going to be putting in place? Are we going to ensure that we have, you know, just what are the, you know, security measures, you know, that will be put in place to ensure that arsonists can get no closer to, you know, INEC offices and electoral materials? Well, well you know that what the commission is doing at our present is that we make sure that all our local government uh, and the state offices uh, take inventory of all the electoral materials available at that state. This will enable us to have an inventory of all our materials, have a data of all our materials, know where the sources are, know where our strengths are, and then begin to prepare earnestly for the 2023 elections. And for a place like Anambra, we have to do procurement of materials that are not available, begin to do trainings for all the election workers and so on. Uh, so we are liaising with the security agencies uh, to make sure that all our facilities, both at the local government level and at the state level, are, 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 pro are protected. And we're also making sure that we ensure some of these materials against some of these uh, hazards. Uh, but I, I believe that the facilities of the Independent National Electoral Commission are of national importance. And I don't know why people should target our facilities and our offices uh, for purposes of setting them on fire. Uh, but we are liaising with the relevant authorities uh, to make sure that all our materials and all our offices and, and other essential materials are protected uh, from some of these challenges. All right. Um, there's a news report that you know says uh, the delay in passage of the electoral bill uh, might be a challenge uh, with regards to 2023 elections. Uh, quickly respond to that. Um, how urgent and how um, how much does INEC need that the electoral bill to be passed um, for us to have better elections in 2023? And is there any hope that that might happen? Well, uh, well uh, the responsibility of the commission is to organize, undertake, and supervise all national elections. And that's exactly what we are doing and what we will continue to do. 
uh, as at present, there is an election act that is in force, and there's a constitution that is in force. And since there has not been any amendment uh, to the law, the existing law that is in force will be the existing law uh, that will be used in the conduct of the governorship election in Anambra, in Anambra State. Uh, but we have worked very closely, collaboratively and consultatively, with uh, the uh, General Committee on INEC and the House Committee on Electoral Matters uh, to make sure that we make the necessary amendments to the electoral legal framework uh, to guarantee better, better elections. And that confidence that in the next few months, the both houses of the National Assembly will pass the amended electoral act. What we have done is to uh, propose the repeal of the existing electoral act and bring in all the previous amendments that have been made into one document, and then we enact and have an uh, uh, election act 2021. And so that is where we are now, and we believe that when it is passed, it will uh, impute more concretely uh, the smart card reader into the electoral act, and also give the commission the elbow and the window to deploy technology in the conduct of elections. And so we are confident that the electoral uh, the electoral act will soon be passed. Okay, um, you know, you spoke about technology now. Uh, can you share with us, you know, a, a bits of, um, you know, what type of new technology might be um, um, involved in the electoral process? If the bill is passed, you know, what changes, you know, are we expected to see with regards uh, technology? Well, well, one of the things that the Commission is trying to do is to um, include into the electoral process a new generation of technology. Uh, because as you know, technology is dynamic and technology uh, keeps on changing. Uh, so what we have advised is that the commission should be given the latitude, the, le the leeway, and the discretion uh, to deploy re relevant technology to the electoral process. We don't want any particular technology to be imputed into the, into the electoral act. Uh, for instance, for the continuous voter registration exercise, we are going to deploy uh, the, what we call the hybrid, which is a new generation of a registration device. And we're also looking at the possibility of uh, deploying electronic voting machines uh, during, the 2019, uh, during the 2023 election. And so we believe that um, we will continue to deepen the use of technology in the electoral process and deepen and also uh, make sure that we remain within the confines and ambit of new technological challenges in the world. And so we continue to uh, try out different electoral, uh, uh, technological solutions in the electoral process. All right. So ahead of the 2023 elections, uh, we, we just saw in the news that one of the things INEC is planning to do is to set up over 52,000 new polling units. And I, I see that in the past few days, that's what you've been doing. You've been going around states, you know, uh, commissioning the newly converted polling stations, you know, in schools, uh, you know, across Nigeria. What is the plan for that? Well, we're, we're, almost, we're almost done with this particular compassion. Uh, uh, presently, all the national commissioners are in the zones where they provide. Uh, uh, presently, I'm in Chebi State and I'm on my way to Sokoto State uh, to verify all these uh, polling units that um, uh, have been, uh, all the voting points that have been converted uh, into polling units. We want to reduce overcrowding in our polling units. We want to reduce the level of violence in our polling units. We want to make sure that vulnerable individuals have access to the, to the polling units. We also want to make sure that uh, uh, our polling units are as comfortable as possible. And we also want to take away some of those uh, voting points that we have converted into new polling units uh, to uh, underserved and unserved areas. Uh, so that people will have polling units closer to their home and also closer to their working places. And they don't have to drag 10 kilometers in order to get to a polling unit. Uh, so that's what we are doing now. And in all of the places where we have gone to, the people have been very, very enthusiastic, and we have moved the polling units away from uh, places of religious worship, away from palaces of traditional rulers, and also away from shrines into special places and into public facilities. And so Nigerians are really, really cooperative and they're very, very enthusiastic at what we have done. And All so right. the new registrants during the continuous voters registration exercise, we have new polling units that will serve them and new polling units that will be closer to them. Uh, so, so I believe that uh, 
we are on the threshold of history. Uh, something that has not been done in the last 25 years has now become a reality, and we are very, very happy about that. Okay, you say you're moving the police stations away from, you know, you, say, you mentioned shrines and traditional, uh, the palace of traditional rulers. So, apart from schools, where would these new police stations be sited within our communities? Well, uh, we, we are looking at uh, public public facilities, uh, town uh, hall unions, community, community halls, um, uh, a school, especially schools, and other public places. We don't want any place that will be restricted. We also want facilities that are accessible and facilities that are, cl are closer to the people and facilities that will uh, give us enough space and enough, enough covered facility, uh, space to uh, deploy our, our staff and also make sure that we conduct a good election. The, the security situation in the country today, uh, I believe, is one of the things that ANEC is also bothered about. Um, how does that affect plans for the Anambra elections and, of course, for the 2023 general elections? Uh, the thoughts of postponement of elections because of insecurity and all of that have started to creep in here and there. And so, you know, how much does that bother uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission? Well, I think every, every Nigerian that has a conscience, every Nigerian that is patriotic, uh, and every Nigerian that loves this country, uh, should be bothered about the security situation in the country. And it is our hope and prayer that all the political leaders will unite and make sure that we degrade this uh, uh, sector of insecurity uh, that we have in the country. But as an electoral management body, it is our responsibility to continue to prepare for elections. Uh, because our elections are constitutionally circumscribed. If you don't conduct elections within the constitutional, uh, constitutionally prescribed uh, time frame, we want the country into a constitutional crisis. And we believe that it is, um, it, it will be escapist and it will be a complete application of uh, uh, constitutional and legal responsibility uh, for us to stop reparations on grounds of, it, of insecurity. We believe that the, the Nigerians should come together and make sure that we degrade this insecurity and, uh, uh, and move ahead with our democratic process uh, because that is the way to go. Okay. Um, can you also speak on vo voter apathy? Um, I, I believe the 2020 elections um, are going to be flooded by a lot of Nigerians wanting to be, be ensure that they are part of it. And so, you know, is there going to be new ways that INEC, you know, will ensure that as many uh, po uh, possible people are registered to vote and take part in the elections? Oh, well, well uh, this expansion of pulling units is one of the means and ways by which the commission will increase them. Uh, 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 people's access to the voting po uh, to the polling units and also reduce uh, voter, voter apathy. We are going to make sure that all the young men and women who are registrable and who are willing to register get an opportunity of registering. All the people who have had one challenge or the other with their family voters cards and we have those challenges uh, uh, obviated. And we are going to mount very robust and strategic uh, 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 enlightenment programs. Uh, to make sure that our people understand the importance of voting, understand where their polling units are, and also understand that it's important uh, for them to give robust mandate to whoever they want to elect. And so we are preparing very robustly uh, for the 2023 election. And we are confident that with some of the programs and policies we have in place, that we'll have better uh, turnout uh, during uh, these elections that we are planning. All right. Professor Sokoye. Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, INEC, thank you so much for your time on the program this morning. And, uh, thank you so much. Wish you a great day ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Right. We'll go on a short break here and we'll be right back. Do stay with us.